Oh, that's exciting. Welcome back. There have been some new additions. I was going to make a video and then I just never ended up doing it because I just wasn't, I was just in a funk. You know, you ever get like, you just need a break. But here we are. We got a time walk. We got an Oko, an Othari, Solitude. Priest of Felorites is a new addition here. I still might do the video. Maybe I'll do it tonight and I'll put it up tomorrow. And I'll discuss all the changes. There's quite a few changes, but not as many as they're um, not on the high end of changes. I'm going to take, I mean, it's obviously time walk. Let's not be silly, but that's a, that's a good pack. There's quite a few cards I would take in that pack. That would make me feel all warm and tingly. Uh, interesting. Pile on, I believe is new addition. Kiki Jiki and Splinter Twin are back. <sighs> I do like a Baleful Strix. Frantic Search is nice. Teferi is nice. I do like Teferi with Time Walk. I think Thank it's Teferi here, right? That seems good. There's no blue duels. Yeah, they ditched they ditched all of Storm. So there's no Storm in this iteration of the cube. And Chris Wolf reached out to me and was like, hey, I expected to hear from you after Storm was removed from the cube. And I, I haven't responded yet. I was at a wedding this weekend. And uh, I think it's just Vampiric Tutor here. Lycos, thank you for the sub. Really appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, guys. Yeah, this iteration, like, I, I really like what they're doing um, with the cube, where they're changing it um, every every month or so, every couple months. So you get, like, these new iterations of the cube. Uh, Freeze and Breach might still be in here, but I don't actually consider those Storm cards. Like, that's the same, like, that's just basically a two-card combo the same way Splinter Twin and Deceiver Exarch is. Yeah, I think it's just Vampiric Tutor here. Oh, him to Torok. I mean, what I mean is that like you're not you you don't have to use your whole deck to build around it, right? Like you can just literally brainstorm yourself, then Underworld Breach the brainstorm a bunch of times and then kill someone. It's it's basically a two card combo. It doesn't require a bunch of like do nothings in the cube. Oh, uh, I like Creeping Tar Pit. I also like him to Torok a lot. We don't actually have to play Tefri if it doesn't work out that way. Also, Lord Skidder is new. Altar of Dementia is new. Shadow Grange Archfiend is new. And this is also a card that was not previously on Magic Online. I can tell you this because this guy was in my Innistrad Horror Cube. But I had to switch him out because he wasn't available on Moto yet. Um, but he has madness and there was a madness theme in my cube. So that's why he was in there. There are a ton of good Grixis cards in here. We got Jace, three Grixis lands and a cut down. I think I just want the Jace here. I'm not a huge cut down fan. Also Faldorn Dreadwolf Herald is a new one. Three, three for three. Whenever you cast a spell from exile or a land enters the battlefield from exile, you make a two, two wolf. So leaning into that, um, the exile theme that red has. Uh, Talisman's not bad. I don't love recurring nightmare. Restoration of Igonjo is new. Gets a basic planes. And then it's whenever you, you may discard a card for the second mode. And if you do return a permanent with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you can actually discard a land with this and then just get the land back tapped. So it's kind of a way to put like two lands into play on the same turn. I'm just taking the Talisman here, I think. It ramps us to Teferi if we want to play Teferi. There's no reason to go into another color there. I will take a Vindicate, though. I think Unearth is new. Whale of the Forgotten might also be new. Return an online permanent to its owner's hand. Target opponent discards a card. Or look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand and the rest in the bottom. Uh, or the rest in the graveyard, actually. And if there are eight or more, you can choose all three. Eight or more cards in your graveyard. 
permanence in your graveyard. We'll get it. Ayara, Widow of the Realm, is also new. I think these um, these flip cards with Phyrexian mana transformation costs are neat because they don't actually have anything to do with the color. Like, this is just a mono black card if you want it. But I don't think we want it. I think I'd rather just have a Malcolm here. I would love some fixing lands here. Concealing curtains is nice. Top is fine, he says, which he would never he would have never said previously. I kind of like Priest of Fellerites. I want to take concealing curtains though. Eh, I'll take pylon. It's reasonable. We're definitely stronger blue-black and just splashing a couple white cards. I will take a Karn. Eh, Prismatic Ending, so we can get three or less. I'll take a Karn. I don't foresee us playing Guardian of New Banalia. Sure, I'll take an Intrepid Adversary. Fingers crossed that we get some some good stuff. I don't know. This is a reasonable pack, I guess. I also like having Karn with Time Walk. Like, I like having Planeswalkers where we can use their abilities multiple times. Thanks, Erk. Appreciate it, buddy. Oh, Living Death or Restoration? I think we're just going with Restoration here. We are not a Living Death deck. We actually have three creatures. And they all cost one or two mana. Ethereal Forger is new, and also a card that's in my cube as well. <laughs> so, I think this card is cool. Whenever it attacks, you may return an instant or sorcery card exiled with it, so you can just play a bunch of cheap things. Delve this guy for, like, two mana. And then, when it attacks, you just start drawing those cards back. We did not get Creeping Tar Pit back, or Baleful Strix. So, that's interesting. This actually, this pack's actually pretty sweet. We have Gix. Uh, I like Subtlety and Ethereal Forger. I'm tempted to take Fourth Earlingus and just splash it. Because it just wins games. We also have two dual lands. Might be under City Sewers. We can search for it. I think it's probably important to start picking up lands. Even if we are passing a fourth, but we have no way to get red. It's just, it's kind of a greedy. Yeah, I'll just take under City Sewers here. Oh, there's a channel. Let's take Flooded Strand. That's actually probably the most perfect land we could have ever asked for. There's a Zealous Conscripts, a Crater Hoof, a Channel, a Carnosaur. This pack is really good. I am just going to take the land we can we can utilize. Broadside Bombardiers is actually friggin' bananas. Sharp-Eyed Rookie is a card I played recently in a standard deck. Uh, I had an article go up on my friend Jake's website for his store. And uh, I talked about playing Sharp-Eyed Rookie in the black-green standard deck, which is pretty interesting. I think we're just taking Watery Grave. Grab them bananas. I don't even know what that means. I feel like there's a meme here that I'm missing. Oh, these guys? Because <laughs> they look like monkeys? Is that the joke? Because that's pretty funny. Uh, there's a Talarian Academy, which I do not think we are a Talarian Academy deck. Well, that's... Underground Mortuary would be great if it was not that. Demand Answers, that is new. It's additional cost. You can sack an artifact or discard a card and you draw two. This is nice because instant speed, end of turn, you can discard like a big creature and then reanimate it on the next turn. 
Uh, it's just worth taking Academy. What do we have here? We have Karn, Talisman, and that's pretty much it. This just this just turns into an enchantment, right? Gurmag Angler is new as well. Might just be Tide Hollow Sculler? I gotta take the Academy. I think the upside on Academy is just better than um, whatever. I can't even remember what the other card was, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's how good it was. I think it's Mox Diamond here for sure. Chrome Host Seed Shark, though, with Talarian Academy. Ooh, that's pretty good. Oh, man. That feels correct. Yeah, we're gonna we gotta take Chroma Seed Shark. That's just an engine in and of itself, and it makes our Talarian Academy much better. I, I would have loved to have a Mox Diamond here, but that's okay. Nice sideboard card. This is a main deck card. Why would this ever go in the sideboard, you maniac? Cryptic Coat. That card is great. That's in my cube. I picked up one of these guys. Um, considering it, I think it's a very good card. 3-3 three, three for 3. Um, that you investigate 4 times. Which is pretty sweet with something like Talarian Academy. It's good with all the Artifacts Matters cards. And it investigating 4 doesn't automatically fill your hand. So this guy still stays a 5-5. Five, five. This is also interesting. This goes well with Thassa's Oracle. We're going to take Cryptic Coat, though, because that card is great. Thieving Skydiver is pretty great. Yeah, I like it better than Murktide Regent. Show and Tell. I think we're just taking Shadowy Backstreet. We can search for it with Flooded Strand. And we don't have a Show and Tell deck. Show and Tell deck yet. Uh, Gut is still in here, which I do like a lot. See, Chrome Coast came back. I don't hate that. Ethereal Forager did as well. We could exile like Time Walk, Him to Torque, Vampiric Tutor, Vindicate so far. That's not terrible. I do feel like our mana's looking pretty decent. Yeah, I'll take that guy. Sure, why not? Well, none of these look great. Waker of Waves is fine. It's just like a two mana half of an impulse you just get to draw a card Everflowing Chalice is something where where Fox is nice but it's like double white I'm gonna take the Chalice eh, we'll take Thassa's Oracle here I bet Inverter comes back take Gurmag Angler sure wow Basking Rootwalla and on Onye's Ravager I'll take Azurda. We can cast it if we really, really need to. If we get like Grim Monolith or something in this pack. Pack Rat has returned. Oh, what up, Beaver Titan? Oral, I got that package you sent me, dude. It was super cool. Oral sent me a bunch of Warhammer 40k stuff. Just like extra stuff that he had, and it's really sweet. And I don't. It's. They're very tiny. They're much tinier than I thought they were. The parts are, like, so small, dude. Really, really appreciate it, man. I'm super excited about it. Um, This pack is good. We got Metamorph, Venser. Uh, is it just Pack Rat here? It could be Venser. I do like a Venser. Actually, Metamorph is good, too. Jeez, this is a... This is a tricky situation. Pack Rat's good, but I don't know how it how it would fare in this particular cube. I think I just want Metamorph here. A good pair of clippers and an X-Acto blade and plastic glue. I was wondering about the glue. I was like, do you just push? Are these like pushed together and they stick or do I actually have to glue the parts? So I guess that answers that. Entomb is interesting. I don't think we have anything to reanimate currently. That's unfortunate. We neither have creatures to reanimate. We, ha we don't have reanimate spells. So we're kind of... We're kind of in bad shape when it comes to reanimating. 
There are some that are push fit, but not those. Okay, that's good to know. So they don't not exist. I like balance, but not in this deck. Actually, Kappa Cannoneer is fantastic. Let's just take a Kappa Cannoneer. I like a Mana Leak. That's pretty good. I love a Leovold, but we don't have green. Not even a little bit of green. Don't care about Spell Queller or Recruiter or Blade Splicer. I think it's just Mana Leak, especially with... I guess Ethereal Forager is not going to... Oh, it gets a card into the graveyard that you can delve. But you're never going to be able to effectively, like... Oh, you can return it to your hand, actually. You don't cast it. So, yeah, actually, that works pretty well with Ethereal Forager. Scrubland. That's a treat. Also, a Blossoming Tortoise, which is new. Master of Death, which is new. Blazing Rootwalla, which is new. A lot of new cards. A lot of new cards. I'm going to take the Scrubland because we can just get it with our Flooded Strand, and it helps our mana base. Oh, Gristlebrand. Souls of the Lost, which is new. Discard a card or sack a permanent to cast this guy. Its power is equal to the number of permanent cards in your graveyard, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. It's basically Tarmogoyf. Invigorate is new. Mightstone, Weakstone, interesting. Is that what we want? Gristlebrand? Does Gristlebrand do anything for us whatsoever? We can discard it with Malcolm or Jace. We don't have a way to bring it back, though. No, I don't think so. I think we're just taking Mightstone, Weakstone here. Actually, I'm going to take Cryptic Thank Command. You. It's been a while since I've had a Cryptic Command, and I feel like we have enough blue to Cryptic Command here. Shua Garner, thank you for the resub, buddy. Dogged Detective is new. It's a 2-1 for 2, you Surveil 2. Whenever an opponent draws their second card, you may return this from your graveyard to your hand. Man, I don't care about that. I like Preacher and I like Rafine. I would take Godless Shrine, but we already have Shadowy Backstreet, Backstreet, Scrubland, and Flooded Strand to get them. And we're splashing like two white cards, maybe. Like, I don't think we're playing Restoration here. I don't really want to get a Plains, but I do like Rafine, and I do like Preacher. I think it's Rafine. Rafine is just very good. So this is, this is 20 cards. We need still need three playables. Headliner Scarlet, eh? Throw their haste for four. When it enters the battlefield, creatures target player control can't block. Target player controls can't block. So you get basically a free attack. It's kind of a Hell Ridery effect. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, you exile the top card of your library face down. You can look at it and play it. I mean, this is this card's pretty good, and it's also a card I, I picked up with plans on adding it to, to IQ. I like Lingering Souls, especially because we have so many discard outlets. It's nice to be able to just put cards in the graveyard with Lingering Souls. I also do like a Bone Shards, but I'm going to take Lingering Souls here. Wow, we're literally just getting all of the Black White Lands. We've had Godless Shrine and Silent Clearing. It's likely I'm going to pass it for Ledger Shredder. I don't think we're Mox Opaling. I mean, all of these lands going over here. This is 21 playables. Oh, Packrat came back. <sighs> Yeah, I'll just take a pack rat if it's going to come back. This is an island plains. I kind of just like mana tithe here. I kind of just want to get him with the mana tithe, you know? I'll take a Thran Dynamo. Oh, Walking Ballista coming back is pretty nice. I don't like life from the loam in here, but what are you going to do? All right, you can go. This is 24. I do like walking ballista. Invigorate in the cube makes W. Wow, 
Whatever that means, Frogler. Um. It might just be Mana Leak. Makes me wonder whether Infect is a thing. I don't think there's any Infect in the cube. I think it's just for like the domain aggro decks. I just don't feel like we're going to have the white that frequently enough. That frequently enough. Is that a saying? That frequently? I guess we don't need enough there. That frequently. I'm, I'm surprised the Inverter of Truth didn't come back, but Thassa's Oracle did. I mean, we're only splashing for four white cards right now. Lingering, Vindicate, Rafine, and Teferi, which I think is totally fine. I also don't know if we're on Talarian Academy here. What enables Talarian Academy that doesn't make it just a blank if we draw it? Is this guy an artifact? No, it's just a legendary Sphinx Demon cat. Just a Sphinx Demon, it's not a cat. This can take... So we have like eight artifacts. Is that good enough? I don't think so. I mean, it's great to live the Talarian Academy dream, but I really don't know if it's like, it's just going to be a blank draw, like a lot of times. Or it's going to make one mana and then they're going to kill our artifact and they're also going to wasteland us. <sighs> Heavy blue. All right. Seven... Eight, nine, ten, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, three, four, five. Thank you. That seems good. Ten, eight, five. I know a drunk. Thank you for the resub, buddy. Really appreciate it. I think a dog just farted. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to have. I'd like to have a couple more duels in this deck, but I think our mana base is good. There's no double white cards. There's one double black card. This little pack rat is interesting. Restoration of Iganju just draws us a card. You we discard a card if you are like two or less from your to the battlefield tapped. That's pretty good. We have a lot of two drops that we might just want to get back. Malcolm, Ledger Shredder, Jace. I mean, discarding a land in the late game to restoration and also being able to pick up one of our two, two planes is good. That's interesting. I wonder if that's... That might just be better than Walking Ballista when we're not running Talarian Academy. Yeah, all right. I'm going to screenshot it for both Flooded Strand and Vampiric Tutor Equity. All right. And away we go. Okay. This looks like a keeper. I mean, we don't have black for this guy, but one black lets us cast Rafine, and we still do have a Time Walk and a Malcolm, so. Seems good. Mark, thank you for the resub, my dude. Really appreciate it, buddy. Did you guys see the Baltimore Bridge? Holy shit, man. Well, now we have one Swamper. Swamp. That's kind of like a swamp. I am tempted to play that, but I think we just want to keep up Malcolm and then Malcolm. Oh, 
Oh, they 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 looting. Yep, that's fine. Oh, where were you? Fashionably late to the party. Let's get this guy going. I just don't understand how a, a ship, even a ship that size, could just run into the bridge. Like, I feel like you someone's really got to be asleep at the wheel for that. You know what I mean? Like, that's just such a ridiculous size bridge. I think we're actually pitching Backstreet here. Actually, I guess we can pitch Talisman and get the counter. Yeah, I like that. It seems fine. Oh, video showed it losing power before the crash. That's interesting. Um, that actually, yeah, that actually explains it completely then. Yeah, if it was just a faulty issue, then that's, that's wild. Now I'll pitch the back street. Yeah, it's funny. I saw some images where there were the police boats on the sides of the, the huge cargo ship. And, like, you can really get a feel for how massive that ship is just by the tiny police boats next to it. Like, definitely doesn't surprise me that that thing took out a bridge. But, good lord, man. Power going out on a boat that size has to be absolutely terrifying. Well, I assume they're going to just attack for one little unblockable damage. Two to three times the weight of the Titanic? That's wild. That is an insane weight. Good lord. Um, well, let's attack Kaito. Eh, let's attack your. What does this guy trigger just when he does comment down to a player? Yeah, let's do that. All right, cool. Choose target attacking creature. We'll choose. Whatever this is, it's not happening. Oh, look at these big boys. Well, we're definitely playing a land. Oh, we just win the game. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess their whole game plan was on the back of that Tashana's Tide Binder. I mean, we were going to time walk. Probably discard Kappa Cannoneer and him to Torok here. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back in Florida, we had the Sunshine Skyway, um, which is this massive bridge connecting, like, St. Pete to Sarasota. And it was incredibly terrifying. It was a terrifying bridge. And it went down at one point. Or I don't know if it went down, but something hit it and there was like this big. Let me, I'm gonna, I'm showing, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm pulling up a picture for you guys. 
so you guys can see the the majesty that is this this engineering monstrosity. Look at this thing. This is the Sunshine Skyway. Like you go super high and then you come back down and it's kind of terrifying. Like when you're just riding up this thing. Like I have a fear of heights. Like I'm a heights I have a heights thing. Here's a here's another here's another good view of it. Let me see if I can get this picture. Oh, this is a video on Instagram. Great. That doesn't count. Yeah, it's wild. It feels like you're going straight up when you're going up it. And I'm like, oh, this isn't very fun at all. It's not very fun. I did not enjoy it. Would not recommend. Oh, here, this, this image is humongoid. Oh, this is just people running over it. That's kind of funny. I guess there was a marathon that took place over the bridge. Yeah. It's something, all right. All right, well, I'm just going to submit like this, I guess. Good to watch out for the Tishana's Tide Binder here. I do like turn one curtain, turn two Malcolm, turn three coat. Oh, I like that too. Turn two him, turn three flip concealing curtains. Dismantle your hand a little bit. Oh, a little scrubber. I don't even have to play the... Well, I might want to play Watery Grave just to keep Cryptic Command mana going. Yeah, I do. Sure. I will draw it again next turn. You'd feel like your car you'd feel your car shifting left and right as you cross. No. Don't like that. No, don't like that. <laughs> Skydiving, I think you mean? Oh, wow, they just bounced this guy. But now I guess you get to play him to Torok? I'm very confused. Urza was a good hit. This is a very interesting decision. And we had triple black for concealing curtains and him to Torok on the same turn, which is pretty nice. Yeah, that's fine. All right. You got it. Metamorph. I never met a morph I didn't like. Oh, that joke was terrible. One, two, three. We're just going to flip this guy. Looking at their last two cards. Uh, Astral Dragon. Three, four, five, six. This guy costs eight. I can just copy it. Yeah, I guess we'll just take a Gix. Oh, 
Oh yeah. I, so yeah, I'm because of heights, I'm terrible. Like every time I've driven across the country and I've had to go over like mountains and gorges and things when there's no guardrails, it's immensely uncomfortable for me. Okay. So we know they have astral dragon and one other card it might just be a land. And then they just cast their dragon. Or it could be a removal spell they're going to use right now. Let's cryptic coat. What are we hitting? Ooh, an ethereal forger. So I can flip this guy up, right? It's a cloak a card. Turn it face up anytime for its mana cost if it's a creature card. Okay. Great. Urza Saga into Talarian Academy. Really living the dream there. This guy attacking makes me feel like there's a fallen shinobi coming. So I'm just going to block it. It also could just be because they can't block, but I still feel like this is fine. Like, I don't think there's any reason to risk it. They're just going to play this guy. This guy, you see how consider considered cards a non-creature permanent. So they have to either copy Cloak or Grim Model. They're probably just co copying Cloak, I would imagine. But then we get to copy this and copy Cloak. They copied Grim Monolith. Fascinating. I was not expecting that. So I think we just play Talisman into Metamorph here. Opal or Mana Crypt? Probably Mana Crypt. Could also play Kappa Cannoneer. And then next turn... I mean, there's a lot of damage in the air, though. Four, five, six, seven, eight, this is ten... Yeah, I think we're just playing Metamorph, copying Astral Dragon, and making copies of the Cloak. That's a lot of guys. Oh, Chromo Seed Shark is a nice hit. Don't really want to attack with a menace guy. I guess we could trade with one of their three threes, which is fine. Until I was driving to Leadville, Colorado in the Rockies at like 3 a.m., considered taking a nap on a pullout because the roads were icy and there was so much snow. Driving out a few days later, I saw the turnout was just snow and plows had banked. Oh God, that's terrifying. Yeah, like, for me, like, driving during the day where there's sunlight is just so much, is such a such a better experience for me. Oh, that's pretty good. Many years ago, my grandpa was driving. A truck came in the wrong side. He threw his the car out of the way, but ended up hitting the rail. At least that stopped the car from going down the mountain. 
Yeah, I always wonder about how like secure guardrails are. Like, is this going to stop my car from going over the side? I have to assume that they're engineered to do that, but I've never tested it. You know, for obvious reasons. Uh, one, two, three. I'm going to bottom this and definitely keep Cryptic Command. That'll win us the game. Um, can we just pass here and then Cryptic next turn to win? They have zero cards. I think that's probably correct, right? Or we can just go like... Three... Flying, flying, they just double block. They double block here, they take six. Yeah, let's just go in with all these guys. Four flyers is good. It's actually three flyers and one unblockable. Totally fine. I should have convoked one of these and then I can still flip the seed shark. That would have been better, but... Yep, that's fine. That should be game. Dude, now I get how you people over in the U.S. have to take care about hurricanes and stuff. Brazil has been hit with some heavy rain this month. Floods. Dude, it's nuts. Rain and, and like, hurricanes are so destructive. Like, Florida, every year we'd have hurricane season, which is, like, between probably, like, June and October. Let me see how close I am. Florida... June 1st through November 30th. Okay. I was pretty close. I said June through October. It's June through November. And we won that match. All right. Round dose. Oh, I like this. We can go watery grave into scrub. And then turn three, we can seed shark into time walk. I like it. Oh, we could have also gotten under city sanctuary, underground mortuary, sanctuary city, sanctuary mortuary. I don't know what the card's called. It's the shadowy, shadowy bobadowy. Shadowy backstreet. Oh, we had under city sewers too. Man, we have a bunch of lands. Let's hit that. Let's hit that Minskin boo. Oh wow! Life and death and a shieldred. Good griefums. Reanimate that shieldred. Okay. Okay. So next time we can time walk and ledger shredder. That's pretty good. Play ledger shredder first and then time walk. It's a valley. The place is not so ugly. <laughs> nice. Okay. That's a good one. Hollow one in the graveyard. That's fascinating. This is all fine. Oh, biscuits and gravy. Okay, so we're going to play Ledger Shredder first. Time walk it up. Make a little guy. Yep, got to discard this guy now. Because I want to play Teferi. Okay. Five, five. I get to untap two lands as well. Draw mana leak. <laughs> he did it! He did it! 
Pizza time. What an amazing, what a man. Let's get down to business. So now they can either do something and we mana like it, or we get to flip our 5-5, five five, which feels pretty good. Man. Mana leak. Demonic tutor. That's fine. We counter what you get with demonic tutor, not demonic tutor itself. And whatever you get with it will trigger our ledger shredder. Ideally. Mark, just looking at the pictures of, of Paracambi, looks, this place looks gorgeous. Also, a population of 52,000, which is pretty low. Something's happening. Demand answers. And they're triggering on on Yee's Ravager. Oh, we're definitely keeping that. Discard to this guy. All right, Madness ability triggers. Put that, that bro on the stizzy. So what is this? Attacks each combat. Whenever it attacks, discard your hand, then draw three cards. Whenever it attacks. Um, I don't think I care about that, really. We could also just bounce it with Teferi. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I just want to make a 5-5 five five this turn. And they take 8 and go to 7. I mean, they could recurring nightmare this, but that's nah, fine. Because then we just tuck Teferi or tuck Shieldred. Yeah, this is this is fine. We could also just vampiric tutor for something as well. We could actually do this and then upkeep Vampiric Tutor for Cryptic Command, which feels pretty decent. Yeah, that feels pretty strong. All right. <clears throat> yeah, so now we have Mana Leak and Cryptic Command in hand. Hmm. Well, what are my biscuits? Just gonna mana like this because it lets us make another guy and they don't have the mana to pay for it anyway, so. All right, that's good to know.
It's hot as hell. <laughs> yeah. That's why I got those waterfalls, man. You just got to cool off a little bit, you know? And you were like, I never put my feet in there. I don't trust local government enough to keep that property sani properly sanitized. <laughs> That's what nature's for. Nature's doing it for you. That water's moving. So no blue, but this hand is pretty good. We can also go back street, back streets back into this, into Karn. And this is a blue actually, so. Hey, there's a blue. All right, let's see what this gets us. Ledger Shredder. I'm gonna put this in the graveyard. Reason being, if they do want a living death, we do get something back. And I'd much rather Talisman into Karn here. Full of slugs getting the water and come out all blow. <laughs> slugs or leeches? I hope not leeches. Probably slugs. Oh, God. Neither sounds great, though, you know? Oh, maybe I just play Malcolm here. They demonic tutored. What are they getting for turn three? Is it just like land soul ring shielded? Yeah, I think we're just going to keep up Karn. I think we're just going to ramp into Karn here. This might be incorrect if they do play something because then we could have had Malcolm into Karn. What up, Hero Pile? Well, even if we pitched a land, I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess if we kept Ledger Shredder, we wouldn't have anything in the graveyard, but Restoration does make it nice that Ledger Shredder's in, in there. Oh, that's probably what they got. What's this going to be? We have a Vindicate, just a recurring nightmare with no creatures. Him to Torok. I'm actually tempted to play Concealing Curtain and just flip it here. I think we just have to go Karn, right? I don't know. Maybe we look at their hand first. They discard that card. Could also just Vindicate Recurring Nightmare and play Concealing Curtains. Can also just vindicate the lotus as well. I feel like curtains is strong here. Karn makes a two two, then makes a three three. It is currently uncontested. I think we're just gonna. I think we're going to Karn. If we Curtains and they have a big creature, they can cast it. But if we discard it, then they just Recurring Nightmare it. Yeah, they might not have even gotten this. That's true. They might have just had that. Bone Shard's discarding Rootwalla to kill Karn. Sure. 
got a 2-2 two -two out of it. They also have two cards in hand, so... That's not bad. Hmm. Could just play Restoration... Keep up Malcolm? I kind of just want to see what they have in their hand right now, to be honest. Interesting. Are they going to respond to this? Wild. Orcish Bowmasters. Sure. Well, that's good to know about. And Zealous Conscripts in hand. With Recurring Nightmare, huh? If they steal this next turn. One, two, three, four, five. They can add green. Pump this guy to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's a lot of damage. And then they can sack this to get nothing back. So they can't sack it, is what I'm saying. I don't think putting it in the graveyard is better. They just activate this for free and they don't have to pay the mana. Yeah, I mean, Cells Conscripts is not the greatest hit for, for us to see. It's funny seeing Basking Root Wall and Blazing in uh, on, on Yi's Ravager. Uh... Seeing some action here. What's the holdup? Okay, that's fine. Huh. Oh, I like a pile on. We must construct additional pylons. So if I play this and Malcolm, I can actually pile on. We could also just go get a land to play and then play Lingering Souls. Hmm. I don't know if it's worth vindicating the Bowmasters. I think we can... We're not drawing any cards here. It might be Lingering Souls, Keep Up Malcolm, Keep Up Pylon. That seems pretty good. Actually, I kind of like Resto here. 
But that doesn't give us pylon. Yeah. So one, two, three. Get linger in. We'd have to keep this guy up if we wanted to pile on. I don't think it's necessary. I think Lingering Souls gives us quite a bit of defensive capabilities against a Zealous, Zealous, Zealous Conscripts. Yeah, we have four creatures. We can go Malcolm, pile on. Oh, can we actually... No, we can't pile on. Never mind. <laughs> we can if we don't play Malcolm. Well, they chose not to discard and they played another land. Okay, sure. Let's go this guy. So we know they have Zealous Conscripts in hand and that's pretty much it. Black, get rid of this guy. I'm mean, also going to attack with the Construct. If they want to crack their Lotus in order to activate Basking Root Wall, that's totally fine. <laughs> I will trade a Lotus for a Basking Root Wall. Well, I do want that. I wonder if we should have played... I, I didn't want to play Restoration first to get the land and then play Vindicate because I didn't know what we were going to hit. They're at 10. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 damage on board. I think we just pitch, pile on, play Cryptic Coat. Yeah, if they top deck Living Death, I mean, it is what it is, right? They get back a Bowmaster, we get back a Ledger Shredder, so... And we get to keep cryptic code on the board. Man, it's always Ethereal Forager, huh? Well, we could flip that guy next turn. Well, we know they have Zealous Conscripts and one other card. Zealous Conscripts comes down. Or are they just top deck living? Okay, Zealous Conscripts taking Concealed Curtain, maybe? And that definitely feels like the best option. Yep. It's actually revealing eye. It's not concealing curtain right now. Yeah, okay. Oh, 
I'll take three. And then they sack that to get Bowmasters back. That seems fine. I, I don't feel like Nightmare is really a big threat. It's very mana intensive. I mean, they could sack that to get Bowmasters back, but then they have no other creatures, so they just play Nightmare again. Like, it just doesn't feel super exciting. I mean, we can flip Ethereal Forager. They probably just kill Malcolm here, right? I mean, if we Vindicate Recurring Nightmare, it just gets... Like, they, then they just still have Bowmasters on the board. So it's like, getting rid of Recurring Nightmare deals with a future creature. Vindicating the Bowmasters deals with the current creature. Hmm. One, two, three... Can I delve? <laughs> no. Okay. You just got to turn it up for its mana cost. Turn up for what? It's mana cost. I think that's correct, right? It becomes a 4-3. Yeah, just hit for 6. What just happened? Returns Orc Army token to its owner's hand with the Forge's ability. You may return an instant or sorcery card exile with Ethereal Forger to its owner's hand. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Whenever it attacks, you may return an instant or sorcery card. What? That's a bug, right? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that's that's impressive. Okay, that that is a thing, man. Oh boy. Well, that's <laughs> what the, that is. Just so special. I actually don't even want to block this guy because then they just return it with black with Lotus and then they sack one of my other guys. Like recurring nightmare plus zealous conscripts is pretty good. And if they have no other creatures in the graveyard, then they can't actually activate recurring nightmare to sacrifice something. I will take four. Got it. Activate Underworld. Discard Gristlebrand. Oh, a Metamorph? Just copy Zealous Conscripts? <sighs> yeah, that's all right. Let's do boop, boop, boop. Let's play this guy to finally get our planes. Play a Swamp, though. Steal Mr. Steal Your Girl. I guess I should have just stolen this, right? Because if I steal this, then I just... I mean, I, it should still be lethal. <laughs> like, they have one card in hand. I don't know what it is. But I'd like to get back something... Okay, that just wins this game anyway. Great success. All right.
2-0 in round three. Let's see if we can seal it up. Oh, I like this hand. A little Jace into Restoration, which gets our second planes. Cutting a little close here. I will keep. Unfortunately, we do not get to play first. Oh, there we go. All right, let's start with this guy. Actually, might have wanted to start with Swamp because now if we draw him to Torok, we're looking real sad. Welp. They're probably going to take Jace and then play around. But how are you going to play around Mana Lake? How are you going to do that? That's what I that's what I thought. Alright. Well, get resto. And in my day restoration resto meant restoration angel. Now it's restoration of Igonjo, you know. I will not block. Because I cannot. Caracas. Oh, Lord. Good times. Really? You're going to counter a restoration of Igonjo, huh? Okie dokie. Whatever makes you happy, you know? Can't be that bad, I guess. Boy, Caracas is a real pain in the ass. Teddy rug spin. <laughs> rug spin. I was like... Rugspin? What the hell is that? Oh, you mean Ruxpin. Got it. I also have no idea. Uh, no, it was likely not a Teddy Ruxpin song. I have no idea what I was singing, but it was definitely not that. Oh, Kaito. Well, thank you, Leonard. Thank you for the resub, buddy. Welcome back, my dude. Well, playing Thieving Skydiver does nothing. Playing Jace does nothing. So that's... How do we get paired against these matchups where our deck is just, like, useless? I don't understand. Like, this isn't a super overpowered start. Our deck is just not doing anything against them. Which is unfortunate. Yep. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, I guess we're just going to counter it and draw a card. No, you won't. I have a counter spell, you see. We shall see. Oh, Karn is pretty good here. All right. Well, they did not counter my cryptic command, which is fascinating. that guy on top. So we can make a 1-1 one, one here, put Karn to 3. I think we're just plussing here. I bet they give us the planes. Wow. Who saw that coming? Yep, glad we didn't drop Karn to three. Man, where's the shoulder when you need it? Yeah, well, I'm just gonna just gonna concede after that. They have Ledger Shredder and Restoration in their deck too. Is this the same? Is this just the mirror match? But they have Fractured Identity and Kaito. That's fascinating. All right. Well, now I kind of want to bring in Manatite. I don't feel like our white is an issue, and them uh, being able to just get them. I want to take Thieving Skydiver out. I don't. I haven't seen any targets for it. And just a 2-1 two, for 2 is not super impressive. I will play first. What do you think about that? I'll keep this. Look, we got Shattery Backstreet Boys. That's Britney Spears, not the Backstreet Boys. I don't know why they're intertwined in my brain. They will be forever. If we keep Jace, we play the Jace, not him to Torok. I think that's fine. The problem is, if they just play Caracas, we just get boned. I think it's got to be good enough, though. We just can't just assume they have Caracas, right? God, famous last words, you know. Look at that, both black-white lands on turn one. Manatide. It's gonna just be the mirror match. Hmm. All right, let's see if we got Krakus. Ah, oh, yeah, we got at least we get at least a loot, right? Oh my God, what is happening? Mana leak. I do like a leak. And 
island. That's pretty good. Restoration is fine. We're both playing solid three drops. Yeah, make your own Rashad board. I just play Jace at return to keep their Car Caracas tap down. <laughs> it's, it's a good deal. I think it's funny that Improvised Flavor Text says, your artifacts can help cast this spell. <laughs> like, that's just kind of funny. They're just doing a good job, you know? Swamp. Lingering Souls. That's actually a good one to hit. I also feel like there's no incentive to keep cryptic code on the battlefield. Okay. Well, that's something, I guess. They discard lingering souls <laughs> to get planes back. Man, this is uh this is quite the matchup here. This feels like the Callblade mirror match. That means I'm probably gonna lose. My phone says rain stops in 43 minutes, but that's not a, that's not correct because it's currently 41 and just cloudy. There's literally no rain. Does anybody have that issue? Do you guys have the weather uh, widget on your lock screen and then it just doesn't display correctly? Yeah, do your little looting. My phone thinks I'm in South Dakota half the time. Have you considered that maybe you are in South Dakota? Think about it. Now they're going to Lingering Souls, and I think I'm just countering Lingering Souls. Would love to hit a Black Source to just make them discard their whole hand, I think. But then their Jace flips, and then they get to snuff out something else. Okay, well, that does let us cast Teferi, which is not nothing. Or we could tap this. I think we actually tap this and just play Cannoneer here. Yeah, that actually seems good. 
especially when they're going to nine. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's going to be your turn, though. All right. Got to do what you got to do, I guess. That is a second black source. So they make them discard their hand. They get to draw a card with staff. They flip Jace, which means they get to sword something else. Is that good? We can just hit them for four, which we're going to do. I think Teferi has to be better here, right? Oh, I guess we have to do the white. Yeah, let's do that. I'm actually tempted to tuck this. They have no power on board if we do that. They get to flip Jace, but they can't kill Teferi with anything on board. So it goes two, one, restoration. Okay, great. Never don't have that as one of your last two cards. <sighs> Wonderful. Well, that was a that was a boner. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, that's something, I guess. frustrating guess we weren't playing around fractured identity yep that's that's a that's a thing all right restoration and scale lord okay well I mean, they could tuck this guy and neg this guy next turn, so I kind of want to just attack. But then they just have, they have Fractured Identity, one, two, three, four. They can't Fractured Identity, though. Um, yeah, this feels like the only option here, unfortunately. And we're just going to bounce Cryptic Code and replay Cryptic Code. Yeah. Empiric Tutor. That would have been something. Well... 
Well, they're trying to pay costs. Sure, it's going to be something cool. Great. Okay. Well, they cannot jace on anything but the spirit token here. So they're at five. If we have a way to get rid of this cloaked creature, we just kill them. That is not a way to do that. Eight lands to five lands. Seems good. Must indeed be nice. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to keep this in hand, I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're dead here. They have active Teferi, active Jace, staff with a counter on it, three cards. I don't actually know what possible cards we could have in our deck that even do anything about this. That does not feel like one. I guess we can get a Jace back. Okay. Are we sure I can't flip this to put Vampiric Tutor in my hand? That's not a thing. If they fall in Shinobi here, I'd be so proud. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> fantastic. Just fantastic. Really a Karn and a Swamp. Okay, well, you get, a, you get another one of my Planeswalkers. Enjoy all of my Planeswalkers, I guess. I feel like they're a little bit ahead of us right now. I 
I don't know why we're still playing. I'm gonna give it one more draw, and then we're probably just gonna go to the the end phase. That'll do. Yeah. Yep. I'll, I'll take a two one. I guess I don't know. It's kind of frustrating when we have the exact same deck, and you just end up stealing all my planeswalkers. But what are you gonna do? That's Magic the Gathering. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I guess.